was so deserving of a celebration. Can I get a witness? We've come that Jesus might be exalted among us. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want nothing. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the quiet water. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Before I read, I had a very valuable tutorial in 1988 by this leader. This community was in an uproar. The media stated that this was the most aggressive crack cocaine corner in the country. The churches were fearful, but then Daddy Luda rose up. I was a young man now, I'm not a young man now. But I watched him keenly by his side. And I got lessons on how to mobilize and how to lead God's people. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the heavens. We bless your name and we exalt your name for you are King of kings and Lord of lords. You have all power in your hands. And today we come saying thank you. With heavy hearts, we still thank you. We bless you, Lord God, for the privilege to celebrate a life well lived. We thank you for the legacy that's been left behind. Now, God, we lift up this family and this church. Lord, we ask that you would strengthen them in the midnight hour. Lord, let them remember the good times in a good way, Lord. Father, when they cry, let your, wrap your arms around them and comfort them in the cradle of your arms, Lord. Father, we ask in that even when everyone is gone away, that you are still right there. Lord, we thank you that you are the God of all comfort. Now touch this church and touch this family and all these friends that feel the pain of this loss. And Lord, let your spirit linger with them. Let them know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. And today we celebrate and thank you for the life of Daddy Luder. Bless us all now in Jesus' name. Amen. That's ever happened, oh, Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to me. But I'm going to make you faithful over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Well done. Praise the Lord to the first family, to our pastor Bishop Luda, and to all the Reverend clergy, to everyone assembled. God bless you all. I didn't think this was going to be hard, but Daddy Luda touched us in so many ways. It's kind of hard now standing here talking about him because he's not here in the physical. But I have great memories of Daddy Luda. He was someone that was just well, well known, well loved, well respected, well connected well-received, well-spoken of. He was just, well, a wonderful man. And I have great memories of him growing up uh, in our church family, being connected to Hollywood at an early age and getting to know Daddy Luda. And we would come out yearly to hear him and uh, to be with the uh, family. And then they would come back and visit with us. And we would just enjoy the fellowship. And 
look what God did. He not only allowed me to continue to know Daddy Luda, but he placed me in a position to even to get him to know a little better because now I serve with his son, Bishop Luda, at the Queen's Ministry. And I said, just look how God works things out in your life. But Daddy Luda was such a great man of God, and he was such a great encourager. And he'd always say to me, you're doing a fine job. I know he said it to everybody else too, right? <laughs> but, but I thought he was really being talk talking to me now. I thought he was so special. And he said, you are doing such a wonderful job over there. Keep up the good work. I know God's going to use you in a mighty way. Keep serving with my son. He was. Daddy Luda. Wow. Family. Really, family. Hollywood, family. I'm really one of the daughters. My daddy took me by the hand and gave it to Pastor Luther as a child under leadership under Pastor Luther. I feel as though I've really lost another daddy. But I know you know that he is in a better place. And he's good all the time. Dr. Luther, I miss you, and I'm going to miss you for encouraging me to study God's word. And I'm not going to stop because God is on the inside of me. And every now and then, he works on the outside. Good God of mine. I heard XC uh, mention that. To let you know that Elizabeth McShane, on her test, she got a hundred. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> to the pastor, to the family, to each and every one of you, you have my blessings. You have my prayers. And I stand here to let you know today, I was the baby of Daddy Luda in the ministry. Amen. I tell you, I love Reverend Luda. He taught me so much. And when, this, I'm, I know it's supposed to be two minutes. I'm going to try to get a minute and a half in here. When I got into the ministry and before and after God had called me into the ministry, but I had already went to school. I went to Bethel Bible Institution for two years. I graduated there. But what, the, what really got me was with Pastor Luther. God called me into the ministry, and I'm saying to the Lord, how in the world am I going to tell this man that God called me into the ministry? I was so frightened to even, even go to him and tell him. I was more frightened to go to him than I was to accept Jesus calling. <laughs> Amen. But one day, one evening, I came to prayer meeting, standing in the back of the, of the, in the back. He came out of the office and had to be God, giving me the, give him the confirmation. And he said, he touched me on my shoulder, and he said, uh, you got something to say to me? So I looked to Ryan and I said, do I? <laughs> and he said, come into my office. And I went into, a, uh, we went into the office and I said, oh, uh, I'm supposed to tell you that, to let you know <laughs> that the Lord called me into the ministry. <laughs> and he said, okay, all right, all right. You know how you talk, okay? So from then on, he said, you know I like my minister, my ministers. They have to come to Sunday school. They have to come to prayer meeting. And they have to have a ministry. So he said to me, I, I'm, go, I, I, I'm going to school already. So he said, there is an extension in Brooklyn to go to go to the theological seminary. And he says, on, on a Saturday, I had two jobs. <laughs> I said, but I'm going to try. So I did. Me and God had a talk. So I did. I went to, the, uh, to extension into the city. 
into Brooklyn to the Third Eye Seminary. I went with uh, Pastor Millett. He was there. He was there. There was another pastor that was a Reverend he in Queens. He was there, Reverend Williams. So we was all in the class together. I felt so important. <laughs> but he was just, with all these big preachers. <laughs> but Reverend Luther was a man that loved education. You had to get an education. You had to study. Amen. You had to study. So I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to Reverend Luther. After one more minute, second, after we got ordained, after we got ordained, Reverend Luther took us to the city, to the courthouse, signed the legend so that we'd be able to marry and to uh, dedicate babies. He did that for us. Amen. I'm grateful for the teaching that he gave me, and I'm still learning. Amen. Every, every day I think about how he taught me and continue to study, continue to learn more. I love him because he was a man that listened to what you had to say. He didn't judge you. He just listened, and whatever you had to say, whatever uh, you brought to him, he would listen, and he would answer what you had to say. I love him. God bless you. No, oh, it was in the winter of 1959 when Hollywood was down in the basement having church. A different preacher every Sunday. Until one day, someone got in touch with Reverend, with Dr. Sandy Ray. He said, well, I have a young man out of Rockaway. I'm going to send you the best that I have. One Sunday morning, we looked in the pulpit, and here was a young man preaching to us. Looked at the congregation, and he says, you are sick, and you need a blood transfusion. You have leukemia. The white cells are eating up the red cells. When they get angry with one another, they start to fight. And you just can't live like this. Church, you need a blood transfusion. And he preached that first sermon, blood transfusion. Preached so many sermons. Preached, uh, uh, he preached, I had it all made out. But I see so many of you. <laughs> so it skips. One thing Reverend Luther told us to jot it down. <laughs> jot it down and you won't forget it. And then he preached another sermon. And the highway shall be there. He preached it. And then someone called Reverend Luther. He says, they say, Reverend Luther, they love you. They have elected you pastor. But this person had jumped the gun. We hadn't quite elected him yet. <laughs> but Reverend Luther knew he had the church. And I it was like the last Sunday he had been assigned to preach. He came preaching. I come as a non-compromising sacrificer. I said, what does he mean by that? And then down through the years, he taught us just what he meant. I'm not going to compromise God's word, but I'm going to sacrifice my body. And if you got sick in the midnight hour, call Reverend Luther, and then you wake up in a daze, be kind of a little sleepy, and then you, you, you know someone is looking at you. You wake up and you look. You say, brother, I'm here. <laughs> Sacrificing his time. If my two minutes are not gone, I just want to say thank you for sharing your father, your 
your cousin and your brother with us. And then on last Saturday evening, Reverend Mary McElroy put it so great to us. Because I had many calls this week. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for your loss, Deacon Lanham. And I say thank you. But I want you to know I haven't lost anybody. When you know where someone is, when you know where someone is and you know you know, Sister Carter, he is not lost. He is with the Father in heaven. God bless you, family. God bless you, Hollywood. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. To my pastor bishop, my sister Tanya and Rosalind, and to the entire Luda family, I stand before you with mixed emotions. I truly love daddy. You know the word daddy has a uh, special sound when you call out to daddy. Daddy make you feel special. He make you, he give you spe special time. And that's how daddy treated all of us. He treated us like we was his favorite, each and every one. He was not only a pastor, not only a preacher that spoke the word, but he was a pastor. He fed his flock. He met us at our every need. Regardless of what time of day or night, Pastor Luther was there. And he taught us. He taught us well. He taught the whole person. Amen? Not just the spiritual, but he taught, taught the human side of us. He, know our, he knew our needs. And I'll give you an example. I was in training as a walking deaconess. We're going back a long time ago. And we had classes, six weeks of classes. He taught us well. One of the requirements of being a deaconess and training, you had to come to uh, Wednesday night Bible study. And I didn't have a problem with that because I enjoyed going downstairs uh, with fellowship with Mother Erin, uh, Sister Maxwell, Sister Chisholm, all of the seniors at that time. And they took me in with open arms. And I loved the way they testified and sung the hymn of praise and just glorified the Lord. And I wanted to testify but I didn't have a testimony at that time. Amen? So one day I went to work and I came home and I had a real, real bad toothache. And I heard the saints say, just the blessings in the present, just press your way on. So I pressed my way on to Wednesday night prayer praise and I sat there, my tooth was aching. But as the saints started singing the hymns of praise and praising the Lord and dancing and shouting and testifying, I, I started to feel better. Amen? Amen? They started testifying and I was just sitting there glorifying the Lord. After a while, I didn't feel the pain. So I got enough courage. I said, I believe I'll testify. <laughs> so, so I stood up and I testified about how my tooth was aching and, and I pressed my way on and uh, here I am sitting now and the pain is gone and I just and Mother Aaron started shouting and rejoicing in my testimony, and I was feeling real, real well, and oh my God. And I looked around the room, and there sat Pastor Luda. And he had this smile on his face. You know that type of smile, like I know, I know what you're thinking. And uh, at the close of prayer praise, uh, when we embraced everybody and after the benediction, Pastor came over and he smiled at me. He said, Sister Gladys? I said, yes, Daddy Luda. He said, do me a favor. I said, okay. He said, tomorrow morning, when you get up, call your dentist. <laughs> to the family, I remember the Reverend Dr. Anderson Luder, affectionately called Daddy Luder, as a man of God, one of Long Island's leading clerics, whose legacy on earth will go down in history. Reverend Luther was a dynamic, 
and devoted pastor. His sermons were undergirded in the scripture and guided by the Holy Spirit. Reverend Luda was the sunshine in the midnight hour and any hour of the day or night, praying and visiting the sick and doing pastoral care. As chair of the former trustee board, I was privileged to work with him in, leadership, in a leadership role. On behalf of the former trustees, we experienced Reverend Luther to be a transparent and collaborative leader. He made sure we were informed. I would welcome the early Sunday morning telephone calls, briefing me about the day's activities. He was a man of strong faith. When there was a challenge in the way, Reverend Luther would assure us that there is always a ram in the bush. And certainly that positive assurance would come true. A great communicator, Dr. Luther was, he was not afraid to put a pin in it, I mean the discussion, until everyone was on the same page. The Reverend Dr. Anderson Luther was a brilliant scholar, pursued his endeavors with dignity, dignity and humility. He had many, we had many vibrant discussions about the rite of passage while he was a doctoral candidate a humbling experience one never forgets. But through it all, Dr. Luther was victorious. Dr. Luther was an educator. I remember him accompanying the youth to summer ac academic camps at Farmingdale State College and how he was so delighted when he engaged with them. He was a model community leader, very fierceless an advocate for social justice. He was an author of book in times like these, chronicled his life experience to 9-11. I am still being inspired and learning from his writings. Just last evening, I learned from his book that the unemployment rate was lower in 1929, 3.2 compared to now. His activism pervades. Tonight, I honor his memories with love and say to the family, put your faith in God. For no matter how difficult it is to bear the pain of parting, we have God's promise that one day we will be reunited with those who have gone before us to our heavenly home. I believe that on May 19th, Mother Luther greeted Dr. Luther, Daddy Luther, at their heavenly home. And that one day, you too, will be reunited. May God's promise bring you peace. Amen. Keeping his flock in mind and in heart, regardless of the time, day or night, I can remember the passing of my mother-in-law in the wee hours. The first person to appear at my door was Pastor Luda, rendering his service of comfort for me and my family. He had prayer with us and he sat quite a while drinking tea. He shared his love for his church family and the community. So great is your reward in heaven, Pastor, for all the good work you have done. God has spoken, church. Let us say amen. amen. God bless you, family. Good evening, Hollywood.
Peter and to Bishop and, and the Luter family. Most of you all know me. Um, I don't talk. You know, I can talk, but I don't talk like everybody, speak like everybody else around here. Um, but the Luter family is, I have grown up with Bishop and Tanya, not Tanya, but Bishop and Rosalind, even though Bishop tries to make everybody think that he's, a, that he's so much younger than I am, you know. <laughs> but, but anyway. <laughs> Reverend Luter has, like I said, I've always been a part of the family. When they came here, um, in, as um, Deacon Lanham said, in 1959, I was the youngest living member. And um, um, I also uh, broke ground for the, being the youngest living member along with the oldest living member, we broke ground to go into the um, Potter's house downstairs. And um, uh, Reverend Luter and, and Rosalind and, and Bishop used to stay at our house, Reverend Ms. Wallace's house, when, uh, before the parsonage was built. And uh, so I know all of Bishop's antics and, um, and <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> sorry to put you on the spot, Bishop. Anyway. Um, but I'm allowed to because he's my brother, you know. Regardless, he's my brother. And um, and long came Tanya. She was she was along, you know, down the road a little bit. But uh, once she started coming up as a um, a young, you know, little girl, she stayed at our house on during the summer months, you know. To um, she used to get in a lot of trouble too. And, uh, <laughs> But Rosalind was the only good one, you know. <laughs> good evening, everyone. Protocol has already been established, so I'll just say what I wrote. I did learn Deacon Land Ham. Pastor taught you and me the same thing. Write it down. <laughs> so... I want to speak to you just a few minutes regarding Reverend Dr. Pastor Emeritus Daddy Luther. And, oh, I got my two minutes. Oh, I'm ready. I wrote it down so I wouldn't go over, thank God. But I want to speak to you about him as a pastor and as a man. Now, as a pastor, my family and I first met Pastor Luther on December 5th, 1982 when we joined this church. My family and I sat across the back seat in the very back of the church. And I'll never forget, Pastor Luda was standing here and it was the first Sunday and he had on his white robe and when he finished he said, now I'm not after you the way I really could be after you if I really wanted to be after you. And he was given the invitation to Christian discipleship. And I said, I know he's not talking to me and my family. We just left one church and we trying to go around and find another church. He came off the pulpit, went all the way in the back where we were. And he stood by my husband and he said, I'm not after you like I could be after you if I really wanted to be after you. He turned around and he came back. My husband got up. He followed Pastor Luda. I got up. I followed my husband. The children got up and they followed me. Good evening. And I'm going to give either Bishop or Rosalind a few more days to mourn before I come after you for having me stand up here. I didn't even come dressed in my clergy attire. Um, but I bring you greetings from Christ the King Church in Decula, Georgia, right outside of uh, Atlanta, where I serve as the pastor of Rosalind Aaron. And so I come tonight, um, and, and she didn't know I was coming, but 
I, I heard the sorrow in her voice and felt like I needed to be here. And um, I am so filled with so much joy in hearing all the testimonies about Daddy Luter. I did have the opportunity to meet him a couple years ago when I had Bishop Luter come to our church and preach a powerful word. And, and I can tell you how I feel so close to him is through Bishop Luter and Roslyn. Because what you say about him is what I see in them. And, and so I think that is the, a great testimony for a life well lived and that the children grow up. You know, Bishop Luter is into education. Roslyn's into education. They are people that care so deeply for others. And so I am just so grateful that God has allowed our paths to cross, that I too can say that I knew Daddy Luter. And now I can say I continue on with Bishop Luter and Sister Roslyn. To God be the glory for such a life well lived. Good evening, Bishop Luter, the Luter family, all assembled. I shall maintain two minutes, that I promise. Um, I stand here tonight not with grief, but with joy. And I listened to the um, remarks of so many, but that's not even a fraction of us that stand on the shoulders of Dr. A.C. Luder. There are many, many of us that stand on the shoulders of his knowledge his understanding, of his wisdom, of his education, and of his love for human beings and his love for Jesus Christ. I wrote what I wanted to deal with. He served well. I came here when this was just a basement, a hole in the ground. I helped put the pews in here with my two hands on my birthday. Pastor Luda was here working like everyone else. I admired that. And today, he has separated moved his membership from Christ, from Hollywood Cathedral. He moved his membership to heaven. And so we spend our years as a tale that is told. Our years pass as a watch in the night. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worked for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. We are not to fix our gaze on the things which are seen. These things that we see around us are all passing away, church. The things which are not seen are eternal. So, 
our trials, our trials, and we all had trials, work for us, not against us. And God is behind it all, working things according to his will for his glory and for our good. The invisible world is the only real world. Only real world. So, I say tonight to Dad Luke, if I could speak to him personally, I would say to him, good night, good night. I'll see you in the morning. Save a place for me. Rosalyn, Tanya, and the entire Luda family. Daddy Luda was meant so much to me. I know I got two minutes too. I don't know how I'm gonna do this, Bishop, because you asked me to sing this song. <laughs> But I could not sing without saying just a few words. 1970, I came up here, a little girl from Alabama, <laughs> all the way from Evergreen, Alabama. And Daddy Luda right away put me to work playing for the Angelic Youth Choir. And I did some crazy little songs and stuff because I didn't know any better, you know. I was doing what I did in the South. But Daddy would take me back there in their office and talk to me. <laughs> and he said, now, Sarah, <laughs> now, this is not the appropriate song for the children. I said, OK. <laughs> but he taught me. He taught me. And he never stopped teaching. He was my pastor. He was my teacher. And then he was my daddy. And I love him. And I love everybody in the family. Before I get too far, the Andersons from Virginia send their condolence. My family, the Johnson family from Evergreen, Alabama, send their condolence. And my nephew Wayne, Para Bostic, y'all remember her. He grew up in this church, sends his condolence. When Daddy Luda's health started to fail, and I would come to church and see him sitting over there. And I said, Tanya, can I say hi to him? She said, sure. And she said, Daddy, look who's here. So you remember who this is? He said, yes. Railroad track. <laughs> <laughs> I know who Sarah is. And Daddy Luda associated me because I live by the uh, Wyandanche Railroad track, Railroad Station. Daddy Luda took a train, and it wasn't Wyandanche Long Island train station. And he's gone on to be with Mother Luda. I told Bishop Luda this the other night, because Daddy cried his last tear yesterday. Amen. what he said. I've had enough heartaches and enough headaches. I've had so many ups and downs. Don't know how much more I can take. Yeah. You see, I've decided 
that I've cried my last tear yesterday. Either I'm going to trust you or I may as well walk away. The stressing don't make it no better. Don't make it no better, no way, yeah. You see, I've decided, ooh, I've cried my last year yesterday mm -hmm. oh, 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 oh yesterday yesterday Come on, somebody. It's a home going. It's a celebration. I concur with the worship leader who has said to us as the Holy Spirit gave him an unction, say it is finished. Plant that in their minds. Daddy Luda. To the family, I want to say, Daddy Luda, Bishop, 
I'm honored to be here at this home going. I've learned so much about the pastorate as it was demonstrated in the witnesses who got up and shared tonight how this man of God touched their lives, make disciples, witnesses, talking about what God has done through Jesus the Christ. I, I have a testimony personally because, can I say Daddy Luther? He did a ministry in my life in my wife's life, starting some 44 years ago. He's the conduit that the Lord used to call us to the church. That Daddy Luda ministered to a congregation he shared his love with and took his advice. And so while I was away in the seminary getting my degree, the Lord was preparing the soil through Daddy Luda for me to have a place to serve in my ministry. He coached, he shared, he blessed the people, and they respected his recommendation. Some 44 years ago, God called me to that ministry that Daddy Luther was responsible for engineering. And I've been there ever since. And I thank God for that. My wife, Reverend, come and stand with me. She's ordained now. She's a preacher of the gospel and the co-pastor of the church that I have been given the ministry over through God's Holy Spirit. She's going to say a word. Praise the Lord. This teaches us how we must live our lives. A testimony of your presence bespeaks the work that a simple man was called to, that God anointed in such a way that he affected so many lives, that he encouraged so many ministers and preachers of the gospel to take up the work. We are not here by accident, but we are here because God called him and through his example, we heard our call. I'm so blessed because I did not know, but I come from a family of Levites. My first pastor was my father, and the first minister from my family, although there are many since, was my brother Cleo. I remember being a little girl and watching him during a play that my mother had written about the crucifixion. I remember him on a makeshift cross with mercuricon for blood. 
And as I watched as a little girl, I only knew him as my big brother. And as they pierced him and he flinched, I flinched. Not so much because of Jesus, but because of my big brother. And tears rolled down my eyes at the horror of what a crucifixion could be like. And after the play, I went downstairs and someone was wiping the mercuricon off. And I knew that he really wasn't Jesus. He was just my <laughs> big brother. So thank you so very much for your presence. My statement is always, what's the lesson? What are we learning now? Let's live our lives so that we affect the next generation. Go ye therefore into all of the world and preach the gospel. Thank you so very much for joining us on today. Thank you so very much. to admit, I look pretty good for 93, don't I? <laughs> so the day's gotten kind of long, and so the Reverend Dr. Marguerite Luther Simmons is going to stay over there, and I am going to speak in her stead. Um, as you guys probably know, she is now the matriarch of the Luther family. We talked about what she might talk about this evening, and I was like, no, you don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Let's keep it on the high side. Uh, but she, you know, and I knew, you know, she was there when uh, my Uncle Cleo and his twin brother came out. She was there, about six or seven years old. And from then on, she proceeded to be the big sister, the stand-in mother when grandma was not well. And she pretty much raised her siblings and put them through school. So um, to her, this is baby brother Cleo. To me, I mean, all of you know him as Daddy Luter, Reverend Doctor, Andy C. Luter Sr. To me, it's my Uncle Cleo, my Uncle Cleo. And I remember coming here when church was downstairs, and because I grew up in Cornerstone Baptist Church, I believe the deacon mentioned Reverend Dr. Sandy F. Ray, who was my pastor. Um, smart man because he 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 sent my uncle Cleo here um, but I remember coming here and, and I enjoyed church where I went to church it's a historical African-American church in Brooklyn but I enjoyed coming here during the summers because there was just something different about church here right and you guys just reminded me when you were playing the music and, and people were just getting ready to have, have way. Uh, <laughs> reminded me of those Sundays when I would just, I was mesmerized. I was mesmerized by my Uncle Cleo when he was in 
in the uh, pulpit because that was somebody different. You know, he just was transformed when he was in the pulpit. And when the Holy Spirit hit and he did one of these, I remember him in his white suit, his white shoes, and that step that I still can't do. I practiced, but I, you know, since I couldn't do it. But um, I, I pretty much grew up with my little cousin, Bishop. Don't forget. And Rosalind and Tanya, we were just kind of thick as thieves as kids, and we won't go into that either. But um, you guys are so blessed, and I, you've already known that. Blessed by my uncle. And what I do know is that right now, he's like this. He heard that music, and he was cutting that step that I still cannot do. So God bless. Rufus Cleveland. What about uh, Daddy Fuller Taylor? Daddy Fuller Taylor. Good evening, Bob Wood. I'm so happy to be here on this occasion today. On May the 19th, when they told me that daddy needed, they couldn't go to church. The first thing that went through in my mind was my sister. She was his wife for many years, and he was a good husband to her. He was a good father to his children, and he loved people. That's what made him so good. The only thing I can think about is, I didn't call him daddy. <laughs> I didn't call him daddy. I, I didn't call him daddy, and I'll tell you why. We, for 75 years, I've known this man. He was in Morris Brown, and my sister and I were together. They got together some kind of way. I don't know how they did, and I don't want to know. <laughs> they got together some kind of way, and it's been going on ever since then. But the thing that I loved about Cleo, he never judged you. He just always said, well, you know, he met you where you were. He met you right there, and he was a good father. He was even a good master to bully. <laughs> they know what I'm talking about when I say bullet. <laughs> but uh, we loved him. We have been friends for so many years. I've known this man for 75 years. Can you believe you've known a person for 75 years? And you've know, known him to be a good person. And I am so happy that I'm here to celebrate with Hollywood for your good pastor who has gone on. And I am so happy to be here today. Amen. How many can see that that's Mother Luda's sister? Yes. God bless you. We, we could bring it to you.
It is no secret what my God can do. Where's the man on the piano? Could you play that? I don't know about tomorrow. There's no secret. You know, I got to be here because I'm five minutes older than your pastor. And I feel good now. <laughs> Go ahead on and hit it. There's no secret what God can do. Good evening. Um, I'm not a familiar face to many of you, but I am a familiar face my family. I told Uncle Cleo I really don't like the word waves, but I know that's the best way to distinguish, in this sense, his grandchildren. So I am the daughter of Cleo Yvette Luter, and I stand here not just for myself, but also to speak for my mother who couldn't be here. Granddaddy wasn't how I saw him, how y'all see him. He wasn't a reverend to me, even though that's what he did. He wasn't daddy looter to me. He was just simply granddaddy. Things were different for me growing up than some of my cousins. I had seizures and I had eye problems. And it was just me and my mama mostly. But granddaddy, was like a superhero. <laughs> it stood in the gap. <laughs> and not just with me, but before me, nine years before me. See, my mother was in an accident in 73 where she was hit by a drunk driver. And she nearly lost her life. But because of granddaddy, and even, even my grandmother's second husband, and even Uncle Cleve. Granddaddy sent my mama out to California so Uncle Cleve could care for her. And if they didn't care for her, she wouldn't be here, and neither would I. So when I see Granddaddy, I see Granddaddy. I don't see Daddy Luter, I see a superhero. Yes, I was that grandchild that didn't necessarily grow up in church, but granddaddy knew exactly who I was and he knew how to handle me. And I'm the oldest son of Rita, Olivia, Luther, David, Lawrence. <laughs> my assignment on this occasion is to pay a tribute to my granddaddy, Dr. When I called my mother and I asked her, how should I pay tribute and honor to your father? She said to me, son, I'll think about it and I'll send you something. She sent me something. And in her words, our family tree and the lives that we live speak and tell this story better than anyone else could. On Wednesday, July the 16th, 1947, my mother was born, Rita Olivia, to the parentage of Easter Harvey Luther and Andy C. Luther. It was on this hot summer day in Macon, Georgia, that the legacy, as Granddaddy affectionately called his first wave, began. A couple of years later, my aunt, Cleo Yvette Luter, 
was born on April the 20th, 1949, which added another daughter to this legacy. Then finally, my Aunt Vita and Luther Penniman entered the world on November the 1st, 1951. And that established the staples of the first wave of the Vita legacy. Mama remembers fun times going to the museums, Coney Island, Playland, Radio City Music Hall at Christmas time, and dining at Patricia Murphy's Restaurant in New Amsterdam. What a treat, she says. Camping on Long Island Sound, shopping in the city, and the train and airplane rides to New York City. Granddaddy attended several high school and college graduations of my siblings and cousins. I suspect he was at one of uh, Zalika's, as well as the wedding of my sister, Daphne Bailey, the oldest granddaughter from the first wave. I remember periodic visits from Granddaddy and Mother Ruth. I recall traveling around Florida. I recall fishing. And most vividly, I recall reading my first book to Granddad as he sat there patiently as I tried to work out all of those words in my first book. <laughs> when I went off to college, I moved to Washington, D.C. to attend Howard University. And during that time, I was a little closer to Long Island, and I was able to come up and visit from time to time. And it was at that time I was able to establish a relationship with Granddaddy. See, at the time, he was working on his doctorate, and I was working on my undergraduate degree. And I had a fax machine in my room. And we were able to trade faxes throughout the night as he was burning the midnight oil, and I was burning it as well. And we were able to trade faxes throughout the night, sometime encouraging one another to keep going, because I knew it was hard on him, and he knew it was hard on me. This tribute would not be complete without mentioning Mama's relationship with her Aunt Margie, Marjorie and Dot, Mary Ann and Uncle Cleve. Mama often speaks of them with affectionate memories. Over the years, just like any other family, our past has taken many twists and turns. We paired our share of ups and downs, laughters and tears. As we've discovered who we are, and what we want in life, our families have grown and more leaves on the family tree have been added. Some of us moved away and then back again, but I stand here with you tonight because we share a common loss, a major branch from our family tree has fallen. And Daddy has always just been such a ray of sunshine. And what I mean when I say that is when he walked in the room, you felt better. When you heard his voice, you felt better. He would be at all of our events. He would come to my track meets, because he was a track star, so I knew we had that in common. And he would come to our recitals, and he was always up to date on the latest technology. He would come home with a, <laughs> with a new phone and say, little Tanya, I just got this new phone here. Now I want you to take this, read these instructions, and <laughs> put all my contacts in here, and show me how to use it. I'll be upstairs when you ready. <laughs> so he kept us up to date with the latest technology. We would argue and brag over who was gonna get his car, because he always drove the best car. But on Sunday morning, he was always, no, 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 that's not right. He wasn't always the first one up. Grandmommy was always the first one up. But granddaddy was always the first one out the door for Sunday school. And we would intentionally not be ready because we did not want to go to Sunday school. We would much rather hang back and go with grandmommy so we could avoid Sunday school because we already knew that once we got to church on Sunday, we would be getting trivia questions after church on what was the word today what was the lesson? And if we were not paying attention, we would get called out, Tanya, LaDawn, in the middle of the sermon, praise God. <laughs> yes. So we learned to pay attention, and I can recall um, when I was younger, B 
being up in that balcony, my daddy was running the media at the time, started that media ministry. And me, my mom, and my sister were sitting up in that balcony, and granddaddy was preaching. And he opened up the doors of the church, and it was altar call time. And my mother asked us, we were literally hanging over them bars. It's amazing being back here. It's I'm overflowing with emotions right now. I'm trying to keep it together. Um, but we were sitting up in that balcony, and my mother asked us if we knew what it was to be saved. And she explained salvation to us. And we were like, shoot, yeah, we want that. And we came down, and she walked with us down, and granddaddy was standing here, and he had tears in his eyes. And we just knew we were excited. You know that excitement that you get when you give your life to God, and you receive the gift of salvation. You were like, oh my goodness, I know this is it. And granddaddy just had tears in his eyes, and he hugged us, and we were like, we really don't understand why he's so emotional. <laughs> But amen. And I remember being baptized. I remember granddaddy baptizing us. I remember granddaddy giving me my first Bible. I remember when I went away to college. And, you know, when you are first one there and last one to leave, you kind of get a little, you know, jaded when you're young. So you're like, when I get out of here, I ain't going to no church. <laughs> Y'all see me, the Lord. We trained up in the way that we should go, so we'll be back, but for now. To this wonderful family, to this church and its friends, and to my friend, Bishop Talbot. I didn't come to preach. <laughs> In fact, it's past my bedtime. <laughs> I'm going to say what I'm going to say and get out of here. But to this family, I don't have to say this. You already know this. This was a great man. Hey, Amen. I have my stopwatch. <laughs> Two minutes. Amen. Right. Hey, to the family, God bless you. Bishop. Bishop, God bless you. Tanya and Rosalind and to the entire family. The Millette family and the Luda family grew up together. Dr. Millette, Dr. Luda were friends. Mother Luda, Mother Millette were friends. My siblings and the Luda siblings, we all grew up together. I remember coming here to this church back in, I think it was 1979, 1980, and I preached here. Dr. Millette said, you're going over to Hollywood. And I was so nervous, I was a teenager. And I came here and I remember Dr. Luda was one of the first pastors, a man, that opened his doors for a young teenage preacher, still preaching with flashcards. And then years later, when it was time, when my ordination came, I heard um, the sister said that they got a hundred, this one got a hundred. Dr. Luda was uh, on my council, I got a 99. <laughs> I just thought knowing that he was sitting there, that everything would be, but he was tough and he was hard. I thank God for Dr. Luda. I thank God for the family. My mother is here, and my mother doesn't come out that much. <laughs> Amen. But I want to say this. My time is just about gone because I want to be respectful to the time. I want to say to you, Bishop, and I want to say to the family, we have been, I have been where you are. I pastor where my father pastored. You are pastoring where your father passed it. And I just want to say this to you tonight, and I, the only thing I want to say to this family and to this church family is what the word of God says. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. 
You're going to cry, but joy comes in the morning. You may not understand everything, but joy comes in the morning. And I wonder if we could just give God praise for the life, the legacy of Dr. Anderson Luther Sr. I went over my time. Can you believe that? God bless you. Grace, mercy, and peace unto you, Bishop. Bishop Talbot, our worship expediter. President Washington, to all of you who are here tonight. Uh, in the year 1959, I wasn't born yet. <laughs> My father had come to New York from Houston, Texas, after serving the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church for 27 and a half years to take on the leadership of the First Baptist Church of Far Rockaway, where Dr. Luda is a grand, is a son of that ministry. Um, Two times that Dr. Luda had come to First Baptist Far Rockaway. One time we were in celebration of our church's anniversary celebration, and as they were reading the history of the First Baptist Church, Dr. Luda had gotten up when it was time for him to preach and made corrections to, to the history. You, you remember that, Bishop? You, Bronson, you remember that? He did that that night. He made corrections to the history because of service that he provided to the First Baptist Church while the church was vacant. They corrected that history. When they were celebrating my father's 17th pastoral anniversary and 50th year in the preaching ministry, Dr. Luda was on the program. They had a particular night where they were, where the sons of my father were on program. Dr. Luda, who was preaching that Sunday, not on the night when the sons was on. And once again, reiterated that the First Baptist Church had omitted him because of his sonship. And although my father was not his pastor in terms of laying hands on him and licensing him, he honored my father as his pastor. And so I'm coming today as a son of the first church under the leadership of Dr. Howard Oliver Scott Sr. And to you, my family, our family, we say to you, God bless you, God keep you, we're praying with you, praying for you. If I may close with this to Daddy Luda, who has done a great work here. We say to you, a race well won, a job well done, and a crown well won. And God shall wipe away all of our tears. To this family, Bishop, the family, in times like these, God always give us strength in a moment like this. A general has fallen asleep. He served this community well. For over 50 years, I watched him in this community. He served, he was a man of honor, praise God. When you've seen Dr. Luda, you've seen a preacher. He dressed like a preacher. He looked like a preacher. He walked like a preacher. He talked like a preacher. And God gave him favor. When I was building my church right down the street over 30 years ago, came by many times while we were building our church. 
keep the good work up. So many times we see him in a diner, other places that's coming there, had his hat on, looking all dampy and everything. He had a demeanor that a should have in times like these. The Bible speaks of five crowns, but one crown is given to the shepherd. When the chief shepherd shall appear, he will give the under shepherd a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So today we say to our father, to dad Luda, good night until the morning. On a little boy, my mother would put me to bed early at eight o'clock. The older ones went to bed at nine o'clock. And my father was at 11 o'clock. But the next morning, at breakfast time, all of us got together and got the same time. Well, when Christ come back in the midair and blow the trumpet, all of us sleeping or alive should be caught together at that hour. God bless you all. Good evening, everyone. Bishop, Rosalind, Tanya, family. We're ecstatic tonight to not only hear of the wonderful life of Reverend Dr. Daddy Luter, but also the wonderful tributes that have been paid tonight. You know, I was really blessed um, by uh, little Tanya's cadence of Daddy Luda. I mean, you just can't talk like Daddy Luda. You gotta have the cadence. Your words have to form. And as she was talking, I was like, wow. Another Levite in the making. <laughs> Dr. Maya Angelou said, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. And I regret, regretfully tonight have to stand with my sister who is here, Stephanie, Elder Stephanie Norton, my wife, Pastor Tina Norton, and welcome you to this fraternity of those that have lost their parents. Several things that I want to do tonight, and I'm going to be like Dr. Millett, I'm going to be under two minutes because it's almost past my bedtime, Pastor. I realized that I had to not be selfish when daddy went home to be with the Lord in 2004 because I had realized that there were young men and women that had come up in the church where he represented the only father that they ever knew, the only grandfather that they ever had, the only uncle that would ever speak a word into their lives. And so even in my grief, I had to learn not to be selfish. But tonight, I'm so thankful that one of the things that we shared along with the Millets was a friendship. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 18 that a friend comes and go, but a true friend sticks by you like family. I don't even know who my relatives are. Matter of fact, I'm like most of you. My relatives are just relative to my situation at that time. But my family was the family of God. And I remember times when Mama and, and, and Daddy Luda would come by and we would come out to Amityville and we were just connecting his family. And then I'm so thankful for the example that I've had, even, I haven't heard it mentioned too much tonight, but Daddy and Mama Luda were a power team. Dr. and Bishop Norton were a power team. In other words, the wives didn't walk behind them, they stood by their side. Come on, somebody. And those of you may not know it, I learned about entrepreneurialism at Luda Scott Travel Agency. When somebody would say, Carrie, go get the paper and put it in the, the, the copy machine. When I would watch pastors' wives from all over New York work in that office and do things that no other women in the kingdom of God were doing. Somebody say friends. A friend loves at all time, Proverbs 17 and 17 says, and a brother is born for adversity. 
And then I love this one. Proverbs 27 and 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the continents of his friend. You know, that word continents is a French word, and it means facial expression. But then the Bible draws it out even more. It calls it character. And I'm so glad today that we had people of character that we walked with. People of character that we talked with. Come on, in the midst of adversity, nobody never let your business get out on Great Neck Road. You can celebrate today because we celebrate tonight a man of true character.